Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm using the mic on my phone. So give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Hello. Hello. I'm Liz and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, we have a really full house and that's super cool. Um, I'm so happy you guys took the time to spend a Saturday afternoon with me. If you want to say hi in the chat and let me know where you're watching from, that would be cool. Uh, I am in Louisville, Kentucky, and it's a nice cold and rainy day again. <laughs> it has been for a while, but that's okay. Cause we cuddle up in our knit and crochet, uh, makes. So we have, um, just click this. okay, today we have a color block dishcloth set that I'm going to show you. There's actually three different dishcloth patterns in here, and I think we have enough time to go through each one of them. Uh, so I will kind of go from start to finish with all of them and give you a little sample. Um, you should also have the pattern. So if you want to print that out and follow along with me, that would be awesome. And I just need a couple yarns. We don't really need too many um, supplies for this. So let's spotlight my hands and I can show you what we're going to use in this class. Okay, so all I have are my two uh, cotton yarns. This one is Eco, Eco Capri Cotton in this color is white, and then I have one in denim splash, but there's lots of different colors you can choose from here. I also have this nice little combo that's like a, this one is granite splash with a gray, and that goes nice together too. So these are fun for your house, just to kind of pick some colors that go with your decor. Okay, Ugh, let me get, rid oh, okay, hold on, I gotta click this, got it. Now I can see, if anyone has a question, please throw it in the chat um, and you can remind me if I, it's echoing a lot, okay. Yeah, I, let me make sure my computer audio is off. Um. Why is my audio settings audio? Yeah, I don't, I'm not on audio on my computer. So I don't know why it would be echoing. Okay, how about, no. Nope. You sound good on my end, Liz. Oh, okay, okay, and okay, good. A bunch okay. of people are saying that there's no echo. Oh, okay, good, 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 good. That's good to hear, because I'm like, I don't know how to fix that one. It looks right on my end. Okay, cool, sorry about that. Where was I? Yes, okay, so all we need is a couple cotton yarns for this. The cotton, um, this one, the Eco Capri cotton, it's a recycled cotton and a polyester blend, which is super good for any kind of kitchen stuff because it washes really well and it, it doesn't um, stretch a lot. So this is a good one for dish, uh, dish cloths. And also if anyone has any other questions, I think I said that, go ahead and make sure you ask them in the chat and I will try to get to every, uh, everything you need, okay? All right, let's jump in. I don't wanna go on and on, you guys. Here is my pattern. Let's start with, let's start with this easy one. Okay. This is just a single crochet. I'm going to do this quickly because it's, it's like super, super basic. Let's do our white. We're going to start with a chain of, I'm just going to do 14. It says 33, but I'm going to start with 15 just to make a smaller sample. And I'm going to do my, <clears throat> slip knot. So this is how I do it. I put the tail end over the one that's hanging from the ball. And then you can just stick your two fingers in like this and give it like a twist like that. And then you grab that little tail and you pull it through and there you have your slip knot. That's an easy way to do it. We're going to go over this like we're semi beginners. Okay, now I'm gonna chain. So yarn over, pull a loop through, and I made a chain. 
yarn over, pull a loop through, and I made a chain. And as always, you wanna be pretty loose with your starting chain. Don't make it super, super tight, or your piece will not, it, it will uh, create a weird shape. It won't have nice straight edges. So for my sample, let's just make a chain of 14. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Okay, so here is my chain. This first one right here, um, I'm gonna skip that one. And this loop that's on my hook, oh, I forgot to mention, I'm using a five millimeter hook, but you're gonna wanna use whatever size uh, you get the correct gauge at. With a washcloth, your gauge isn't gonna really necessarily matter that much because the washcloth, it says the finished one is 10 by 10. If your gauge is off a little, you might have a little bit of a smaller washcloth or a little bit of a larger one, which really isn't gonna matter uh, like it would if you were making like a sweater or a hat or something. Um, so we won't pay too much attention to the gauge for this particular project, but for most projects you want to. So this one doesn't count as anything. This chain right here is the first chain from the hook. And this chain right here is the second chain from the hook. So first, second. I like to turn my chain and I would recommend you do this too. It makes a nice clean finish. Turn your chain to where you see these little sort of bumps on the back. These are usually called the back bumps. And then you're gonna to wanna to go under one loop of that back bump. Okay, so skip this chain, this first one, and then you're gonna insert your hook under the back bump of the next chain. So the second chain from the hook. Insert, yarn over, pull that loop through, and then yarn over and pull through those two loops. And that's one single crochet. And then I see I'm going just under that one loop of the back bump and yarn over, pull through two. So if you get into the habit of going under that back bump, I think you will like how your finished products turn out. And sometimes I find it's easier to like distinguish where the chain is if you just are looking for that one back bump as opposed to going through like the center of it when it's turned the other way. And I'm gonna go under, of course, each of these bumps. Now I made a chain of 15, but remember I skipped uh, this, the first chain from the hook. And I started working my single crochets after that first skipped one. So I should end up with only 14 single crochets because I skipped that first one. And that's basically to give it like room to turn. Okay, so now let's see if I can zoom in slightly here. Now, if I count here, you can see I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So maybe I only chained fourteen. Either way, if you go in the second, I maybe only chained fourteen. But if I chain fourteen, I'll end, and I start in the second chain from the hook, then I'll end up with thirteen. If I chain fifteen, I'll end up with fourteen. Of course, you just subtract that one. So these are the tops of my stitches. And these are the sides of my stitches. Sometimes you'll work stitches into the sides, sometimes into the top, sometimes into this loop, sometimes into the other loop. So, so it's good to know what your stitches look like. These two loops are one single crochet. So now for my next row, because this is the super easy washcloth, it's just all single crochet. I'm gonna chain up one. That's just to give me some height and turn my piece like that. And now I'm gonna go under the two loops. See, there's the two loops of this first stitch. The same one where my chain one 
came out of. You're not gonna skip that one in single crochets. You're just gonna go under those very first two loops. Yarn over. Hi, everyone. I encourage everyone to say hello in the chat. You can also let me know where you're watching from. And any questions or anything you have. Okay, so now that I have these two loops on my hook, just gonna yarn over again and pull through those two loops and there have made a single crochet. That's the first one. And now here's my next one. See, there's the two loops. So we're gonna insert, yarn over, two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two again. Yolanda's in Chicago, I bet it's cold there too. Insert, yarn over, pull through. If you um, didn't hear my intro, I'm in Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky. Pretty cold here today, but it usually, it kind of warms up in the afternoon, which is fun. So insert under the two loops. If your pattern just says single crochet, so let's just take a look at this so everybody knows how to read a pattern too. So here's what I did. I did my chain of, you know, whatever I, I'm just doing a sample. So I didn't do 33, but for your pattern, you're going to do the 33. You're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each chain across, and then you turn. We've done all that. And then we did a <clears throat> single chain one, single crochet in each single crochet to the end and turn. And then you just want to repeat that, that row too. So see how easy that is. It's basically single crochet every row. So if you're a beginner, this is a perfect place to start because you'll get a lot of practice just kind of with your hand movements and how to hold your yarn and how to do the stitches. It's very repetitive. So start out with this one. And if you get a hang, if you get the hang of this one, you can definitely do the other two washcloths. So I'm just inserting under both loops, yarn over and pull through two. The reason why I'm emphasizing going under both loops is because there are times when the pattern will instruct you to go under one loop, the, the front loop, which is the one closest to you, or the back loop, which is the one furthest from you. So pay attention to your pattern. If it, if it doesn't say go under the front loop or back loop, it's like by default under both loops, okay? So you'll only go under, one or the other loops if, if you've been instructed to do so. And here's my very last stitch, which was the first stitch of the previous row because we turned. And my last single crochet. Okay, see how easy that is? Let's just do one more quick row because this is literally the whole washcloth. Yarn, uh, chain up one to get to my height. Insert under both loops, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through two. That is it. Super simple. So hi to everyone who just joined me and welcome. Uh, we're doing some easy washcloths today. This is a good beginner one but we're gonna go over the other two also, which are just different stitches, not hard, just different. And last one. And now if I keep working in this way, single crochet all the way across, um, I'm gonna get my, let's see if we can see the picture, this white one, which is just plain single crochet all the way across, but it makes a really nice kind of dense fabric. So it's good for washcloths. Um, it doesn't have like a bunch of holes in it. So the key to getting your edges straight is to make sure you don't, or, or is to count your stitches and make sure you don't like lose any stitches. So if you started with 32, you wanna make sure you have 32 with every single row. Count, count, count your stitches. Um, whenever people are just starting out, they will stop counting their stitches. And then what'll happen is your, your piece will start going like this. And it'll like, you just keep losing stitches or you keep adding them and it, goes like this. <laughs> so turn with every row. 
chain up. And then every time I'm going to go through my row, I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, to make sure I have the same number of stitches, six, seven, eight, that I had when I started, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Sometimes you'll like sort of lose this last stitch. It, it will sort of uh, like be bending like this and you won't realize it's a stitch and you'll accidentally skip it. That's how, that's the usual thing that happens. So make sure you uh, count your stitches and make sure you keep your tension even throughout your project. So try not to be really tight on some stitches and really loose on other stitches. And that'll just come with practice too. Okay, so let's move on to a little bit more. Let's move on to the linen stitch one. Linen stitch stripes. We're going to start with, so with linen stitch, I think we need third, a multiple of three. So instead of doing 34, I'll start with a chain of, what do I need? 12 plus two, 14, 15. I'm gonna start with 15 again, okay? So I need a multiple of three plus two. That's the stitch multiple. So we're gonna do our slip knot. So my tail end goes over the other one. And then you'll just insert those two fingers, give it a quick twist, grab that little tail with your other hand, grab those other two, pull, and you've got your slip knot, which of course is can loosen and tighten. Okay. So just tighten that up a little bit. And we'll do our chaining again. Yarn over. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, I need 12 and 15. So one more for the turning chain. I want, um, I want 14 single crochets to start, so I have to chain 15 because that first one's not gonna count. And now it says single crochet in the second chain from the hook, just like we did previously. But then we're gonna chain one and skip the next chain. So remember, this counts as nothing. First chain from the hook is this first chain, second chain from the hook is this chain. And turn so I can work into the back. Okay, so, so do you mean, let me open this question. Oh, where'd you go? Hey, Mena, did you see that question? Cause I lost it. Where's my chat? Okay, there it is, I got it. Liz, how, Liz, can you show the foundation row how the V turns out? Yes, that's going to be the next one. That's probably the most difficult one. So we're going to do that last. Um, it's kind of like a V stitch. It's not, it's not really a V stitch. It's, it's a long single crochet, but we're going to do that after the linen stitch. So you mean groups of three plus one. So when I say stitch multiple, I mean groups of three. Yes. So like, like, I'll give you this one as an example. This is the one that's the long single crochets. So here I have one stitch, two stitches, three stitches. That's a group. One stitch, two stitch, three stitches. One stitch, two stitch, three stitches. So this is my multiple because to keep this pattern going properly, I need three stitches. 
this is one group of three, and then this starts another group of three, and then this starts another group of three, right? So then um, when I get to the end, it might be a little different, right? Because here I have one and then I only have two more or one more. And then on this side, I don't have the full group of three. So that's why sometimes your multiples will be groups of three, but then you have to also account to the, for the ends. So you might only have one extra single crochet here and one extra single crochet here to make it look nicer because you don't want to start with this, this stitch. You don't want to begin right with there. You want like a little space, uh, like a frame almost, right? So it kind of looks like it, the, the actual stitch pattern is framed on the ends. So that's why you need to add two or sometimes it's four, whatever the stitch, whatever the multiple of the pattern is. Um, with linen stitch, um, I think it's almost always three plus two. Am I thinking, oh wait, I'm th I might be thinking of granny. I think, here, let's just do it and then I'll be able to, I'll be able to explain it again when we do it with the linen stitch. It's gonna vary on your pattern. The multiple will vary on, you know, depending on what pattern you're, you're working on. And sometimes your pattern won't even tell you what the multiple is. Uh, if you have those like stitch books, they'll usually tell you, like if you have a 200 cro crochet stitches or whatever, it'll tell you what the multiple is. So you can uh, scale it. Like if you wanna make a big blanket out of one, particular stitch pattern. Okay, so let's just get through my linen. Here's my first chain from the hook, second chain from the hook. Going under that back thumb with a single crochet. Now my instructions say single crochet and second chain from hook. That's what we just did. And then I'm gonna, it says chain one, skip next chain and then single crochet in next chain. Now, if you see, and that sounds easy enough, but if you see this little star, and then you see this semicolon, those are two symbols to always look out for uh, because that's gonna tell you what your repeat is, right? So your repeat's gonna begin just past this little star and your repeat is going to end wherever you see the semicolon. That's why immediately after the semicolon, it tells you to repeat from star to end. So you're gonna just keep going from here to here, and then from here to here, and then from here to here, over and over and over, okay? So Susie wants to see the edge of the first example you demonstrated by working into the bump of the chain. Yes, okay, so, so I'll work into the bump of the chain again but I wanna make sure I'm doing what I need to do. So I did single crochet and second chain from hook, and then I'm gonna do chain one, skip a chain. Okay, so I did my single crochet and the second chain from the hook. Now I wanna chain one here. Don't forget to do that, so chain one. And now I need to skip this chain. We're not gonna do anything in there. And then I need to go into the next chain with a single crochet. So these are the back bumps right here. If you turn your chain like this, this is what it looks like when you chain it. You can go into the center like that. That's how it's done a lot. Um, but I prefer to go into the back bumps because it makes a much cleaner finish. Um, let me show you. This is the top of the last little piece that we did. This is the bottom. So you can see it looks very similar to the top. So that's just kind of the a cleaner finish. It, it, it looks, they look the same. If you didn't go into the back bumps, it doesn't look like that. It doesn't look bad, but it doesn't look that good, I believe. Okay, so now I'm gonna skip this one, right? and I'm gonna go into the next back bump. And when you're going into the back bumps, you only go under that one loop. That's sort of, see if you look at it from the side, it's like a hill, it's like a little bump. So make sure your, twain, your chain's not twisted and go under that bump with a single crochet. 
And now remember, it told me to just repeat that. So I'm gonna repeat that. Chain one, which is what it says immediately after the star. Skip that chain. Single crochet in the next chain. Chain one. Skip that chain. Single crochet into the next chain. Chain one, skip, single. And we're gonna do that all the way to the end. Okay, so single chain. And then here is where I probably needed another chain because see what happened is I have one chain left and I don't have anything to put in it because my, because my stitch pattern, I can't chain and skip now because then I can't, I, I won't have anything to work into, right? So I can't continue that stitch pattern. That stitch pattern needs to end on a single crochet. It can't end on a chain one and skip because then that'll leave me with just like this. So that's what I was saying about doing the multiples. You have to sort of end on a single crochet and start on a single crochet. So that's gonna add a stitch to your multiple. So, um, I probably just miscounted, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna leave that there. What you can do is if you do that, you can actually untie this, but then you have to kind of seam it in later so you don't lose your start. And then you can sort of fake it like that. <laughs> but you should um, not have to fake it if you've counted right in the beginning. Okay, so now let's just continue and pretend that I didn't have that extra one. You need to begin, no need to begin and end on this single crochet. You then you always, no, you need to begin and end on a single crochet. Then you always start with a chain. Just checking my time. Um, yeah, so you start the next row with a chain but I don't want to end my, I can't end my row with a chain unless it's the turning chain. So if you're saying it's the turning chain, then yeah, that's what you would do. But I don't really consider that the, the part of row one. The turning chain to me is part of the next row because that chain, even though if you look at old patterns, they'll, they'll say um, chain one, turn, and then they'll go to row two but that's not really a good, that's a little bit of confusing. So it's, it should have the next row should be where the chain one is. What I'm talking about is if I continue the stitch pattern, which is chain one, skip one, single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet, I have to end it on that single crochet. I can't end it on chain one, skip one, because then I'll be left with that little chain that I had there. Um, that last chain of the starting chain. And you, you want to finish your starting chain. You don't want to leave any any uh, not worked into. So now I'm gonna chain one, but this is my turning chain for the next row, okay? So turn, all that chain is for is to bring me up to the height that I need to be at. It's not to, it uh, doesn't count as anything, okay? It's just to bring me to the height where I need to be. But this, now we're on the next row. So, Chain one does not count as a single crochet, single crochet in the first single crochet and then single crochet in the next chain one space. So here it's gonna look slightly different. So I want a single crochet in the first single crochet. And now I have a chain one space here and I can't do chain one space again because then I'm gonna have a different stitch pattern. For linen stitch, we have to work a single crochet into that chain one space. So single crochet. 
So now I have two single crochets at the start of my row, and I wanna end with two single crochets at the end of my row. And if you didn't count right, you won't end with that. So that's why it's important to uh, do your counts right. Okay, so now I have a single crochet right here and I wanna do a chain and I wanna skip that single crochet and then single crochet into the next chain one space. And this can be tricky if you're just starting out because it, it all kind of looks the same. Um, the single crochets and the chains look very similar. So it's hard to determine where to put your stitches, but if you can see where that hole is and you can see this kind of looks like the side of the single crochet, we wanna skip the single crochet and we wanna work the single crochet into the hole that we created with the chain one space. And then do that again. So chain one, skip that single crochet, single crochet in the next chain one space. Oops. Chain one, skip the single crochet, single crochet in the next chain one space. Chain one, skip the single crochet, single crochet in the next chain one space. And let's see, here's another single crochet, chain one, skip the, um, skip the single crochet, which is right here, single crochet in the chain one space. And now you can see I have one single crochet left, which is right here. And I can't do a chain one, and skip that because that's what I was trying to say before. It's, you can't do it, like you can't do anything. Because then if I turn my work here, I have this end that's protruding out. And we, so we can't end like that. So we have to end with two single crochet, just like how we began with two single crochets. So you kind of are framing your stitch pattern if you wanna look at it that way. So now I'm just gonna do a single crochet in that last single crochet, and that ends my row two. Let's do a few more rows of this because it looks kind of wonky from my starting chain. Um, so let's do a few more rows so I can, you can see how it looks nicer <laughs> when it's nice and even. So now I have two single crochets here, right? So I chain up one. That's technically the start of my next row. I turn, single crochet in the first one. And now I have another single crochet and then right after it, I have a chain one space, which is right here. So I want to continue with the pattern by chaining one, skipping that single crochet, and single crochet in the chain one space. Chain one, skip the next single crochet, single crochet in the chain one space. So for a linen stitch, you are basically alternating um, the rows kind of, but for every row you're single, you're doing a chain one, skip the single crochet and single crochet in the chain one space. So chain one, skip the single crochet. And now here's my, the end of my row where I had single crochet, single crochet. So I have to end on a single crochet, but that works out because I have one single crochet left, right? So if I do single crochet in this chain one space, Chain one, skip this single crochet and single crochet in the last single crochet. Uh, did she single crochet in the space on row two? So how is the wash goes? Yes, yeah, so this is the pure white one, um, which is a linen stitch. And the only one I'm using two colors for is the, the very last one that we're gonna do which is gonna look kind of like this. But let's do a few more rows of this so you can see how it comes together. Chain up one, turn my work. Now I have a single crochet and I have a chain one space. And I want, for linen stitch, you always wanna make sure you're working single crochets into those chain one spaces. That is um, what makes the pattern, right? But I have a single crochet here and I have a chain one space here. I need to do a single crochet in this first one because I can't start 
with just a chain one and skip that, right? Because then what will happen is it will pull over too much and I'll have kind of like skipped a stitch. And then my, my uh, piece will start being a triangle. So you have to have the same amount of stitches for each row to make it a rectangle or a square, um, even if they're different stitches. Okay, so single crochet in the first one, and then single crochet in the next one. So on these even numbered rows, we work two single crochets in the beginning. Chain one, skip, single crochet. Chain one, skip, single crochet. Chain one, skip, single crochet. And we're gonna do that all the way across. Okay, now here I am. All I have left is a single crochet. So I, I have to kind of interrupt my pattern a little bit here to make the ends look even. So we're just gonna do a single crochet in the last single crochet. So I have two single crochets at the end and two single crochets at the beginning. For the next row, chain up one, we're only gonna have one single crochet in the beginning. One single crochet, chain one, skip that one, single crochet in the next one. And that's what, um, is gonna make it look like it's alternating. This pattern has linen stitch with uh, just one color, but it looks really good when you, when you alternate between two colors because you can kind of see the pattern a little bit more and it almost looks like the stitches are dropped. So here's the last single crochet, the last two. So I'm gonna chain one, skip that one and work one single crochet in that last one. For my next row, I'm gonna have two single crochets at the start and two single crochets at the end. That's just the way linen stitch works. So single, single. More creativity, but I'm definitely an old dog learning. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, I've knit crocheted since I was six years old. Yeah, so we're talking about how, how long uh, we've been crocheting for. So see, mine looks pretty wonky here, and that's because I'm probably talking too much while I'm crocheting. <laughs> but um, you have to kind of get used to that starting chain, not doing it too loose and not doing it too um, tight. I have a different method that I do my starting chains. So I don't really do them that much anymore. So that's probably why mine are looking a little crazy. But I always start my pieces with um, foundation stitches, which is where you kind of work the um, chain and the first row together. And it looks much better to me than doing this chain. And I've been crushing. So, so many people are saying they started when they were really young. I think that's really awesome. I actually didn't start till I had kids. Um, but once I started, it was like, I couldn't stop, you know? And Sonia says it makes for a much neater foundation row. It does. Foundation stitches are the way to go, in my opinion. If you, uh, once you get the hang of crochet, um, look into doing foundation stitches. I probably have a class somewhere where I taught how to do those, but those are like a really, really um, nice way to make a much cleaner edge and um, make your piece, you know, your shape nice and straight and not all loosey goosey. Um, especially for, actually for anything, I'd say you could use them for any, Thing. I was going to say blankets and things, but really anything you can use those for. So this is my linen stitch. And you can imagine if I was doing two colors instead of just one color, these stitches would sort of come down on the, uh, on the alternate color. Let's just add a color. Just, I just want to show you how uh, linen stitch, it's almost kind of like, why bother if you're not doing two colors? 
it looks, <laughs> it has a really cool striped appearance. So let's add our next color just so we can do this. Now let's say I'm at the end of my row. Uh, Haley says, I love your videos. I look forward to you once a week when you did videos on Facebook. Oh, I'm so glad to see you again. Yes, um, that was fun. I used to do videos once a week on Facebook. Now I'm here um, at Michael's once a month. So thank you for joining me. And I'm so happy that you enjoy the videos. And also I do just do some uh, videos. Actually, you can't see me though. I'm just talking on YouTube for Premier Yarns. So check out the, my Premier Yarns videos too. Okay, so let's do, I'll just be chit chatting all day. Uh, let's do some color changes, okay? So let's say I'm on my last stitch of the row and I'm just gonna do my last stitch. I'm gonna yarn over. Don't complete the stitch. At this point is where you wanna add a new color, okay? So before you finish that stitch, you're gonna drop that old color, just leave it there. And then you're gonna join your next color. So I'm gonna take the tail of my next color and I'm just gonna place it over my hook like that and keep it, you know, keep it on there. And then just pull it right through to complete that last stitch. So now, as you can see, how I've set myself up here is I completed my last stitch in the old color and the whole stitch is in the old color, but now I've set myself up to start the next row in a brand new color. So I chain up for the next row. I turn my work, it gets loose. So you're just gonna wanna hold it down until you get going. And what do I have here? So I have a single crochet and a single crochet. That means I want to work a single crochet and then a chain one. Skip that single crochet and then single crochet into the chain one spaces. So now you can see how the linen stitch uh, kind of the color changes is what really makes makes it. You cannot see too much of what's going on if you're just using a solid color or if you're using like a variegated yarn. Um, it's really gonna kind of present itself with a two color change, right? So you can see how it's kind of coming down like that. And then when I do the white again, if I add the white again, I can't pick it up though, that's the problem. You have to add a new one each with each row and sometimes that's kind of a pain. So pull that through and chain up one to start my next row, single crochet in there. And then I have a chain one space. So I single crochet in there chain one, skip this one, single crochet, chain one, skip this one, single crochet. And then you can kind of see that it's gonna have a cool two color look, okay? For this one, if you wanna just practice in a solid color, um, then you won't have to worry about changing colors, cutting colors and, and um, weaving in a bunch of ends. That's great for practice. But if you wanna start getting a little bit more adventurous, you can, um, uh, work with two colors. So someone said, why can't you carry the color up when you change color? And the reason why I can't carry the color up is because I always look for patterns that you can carry the color up. Hold on. It's not worth it to me sometimes to have to weave in a bunch of ends. You can carry colors up if you end at the right place, right? So if you're just doing one stripe with, or one color with one row and another color with another row, you can't carry it up because that color, <laughs> it's so hard to, hold on, let me, let me explain it. If I get to the end of this row with the white, okay, and then I, here's the tail of the blue. I can't carry that up because I'm, I ended up over here and this is over here. 
Um, if I had worked two rows in white, then I can carry it up because then I'll be back on this side. But I, that's gonna, that is gonna be evident in the next pattern. So let's just go to the next pattern and it'll probably, I'll probably be able to explain it more. Okay, so final pattern, we have the uh, color block dishcloth. Let's start with, I believe this is, I wanna get my stitch multiple wrong, but let's start Mm, I think it should be 1433. Whoops. Let's start with 14 again. Okay. So here's my slip knot. One, two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So if I chain 15, I should have 14 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And for the first row, it says you're gonna single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each chain across. See how we're starting with the contrast color? Um, that's just either color you want it to be. It can be either the white or the blue or whatever color you, you choose. We'll just start with the first color here. And we'll just work a single crochet into, again, first chain from hook is this loop, second chain from hook is this loop. So I go under only that loop and I single crochet in each one of those loops. And if you're just joining, we are working on the third and final dishcloth, which is the uh, color block one. That looks kind of like this. And we're on our first row. We're just working into each single, or working into each chain with a single crochet. Under that loop. There's a pattern call for 34. The pattern calls for 33. So whenever you uh, are reading a pattern, Luke's saying he's, mm, uh, uh, Luke, if you have a question, put it in the chat. I've enjoyed your class. I must leave for basketball. Okay, bye, Christine. Thanks for being here. Yeah, so whenever you have a pattern, it'll say, uh, it'll tell you exactly how much to chain. You don't have to account for the, like the first chain and stuff. The designer will do all the math for you. So you should chain exactly what the pattern says and then you'll know, um, because here, see here at the end of the pattern, it says we end up with 32 single crochet at the end of row one. So we started with 33, but that, that extra one, that's the turning chain, doesn't count as anything. Then we have 32 single crochet. So a chain of 33 will yield uh, 32 single crochet stitches. If you start in the second chain from the hook, that's only for single crochet. For double, you usually start in like the third or the fourth. It's different. Okay, so somebody said, all right, the, this is a free pattern at Michael's. Um, we have a lot of, uh, Michael's has a lot of free patterns and Premier Yarns also has a lot of free patterns. If you go to premieryarns.com, we have many of them there. And if you go to the Michael's website, you have to go to um, under, I can't remember where it is, but you have to like go to yarn. And then there's another section that says uh, free knit and crochet patterns. So yeah, this one should have been in the class materials. Yeah, when you got the handout. Okay, so I'm on my last single or my last stitch. Now I wanna count two to make sure I have what I wanted. I'm chaining a different amount because I'm just doing a little sample. So you're gonna chain what the pattern says. I have a smaller guy here. Okay, so I'm gonna count. This is one, 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I have 14 stitches and that is a multiple of three plus two, if I did the multiple right. So um, 12, you, you divide three into 12 evenly and then you add two. So 12 plus two is 14. Okay, that's just, that's, like I said, you don't have to worry about math at all. If you're not, if you have a pattern, they've done all the math for you. I'm just trying to do the math for my little sample so I don't screw it up. Okay, so now I have 32 single crochets and now it wants me to change to the main color. So let's grab another color. I completed my last stitch here, but remember when you change colors, don't wanna complete your last stitch, that's okay. I'm just gonna pull that out and I'm gonna be right here where I would have been and I'm gonna join my blue. Thank you, Ashley. Okay, just place it, loop, loop it right onto your hook like that and pull it through. Okay, now I'm gonna uh, do row two, which says chain two. So one and two, and this counts as a double crochet. So before we were just chaining one, that was just to bring us up to the height. Double crochets, um, of course, are taller. So we need to chain two, sometimes three, rather than one to bring us up to the height, okay? Turn your work. And double crochet in each stitch across. So double crochets are different than single crochets. When we do the single crochets, we go right into that first stitch. With double crochets, we don't. We skip that first stitch, sort of skip. It's not really skipping it, but because this counts as the stitch, we're not really skipping it. It's got a stitch worked into it. It's just that chain of two. And there are ways of getting around that too if you don't like how the chain looks. So, so now I'm gonna work a double crochet in this next stitch, which is, not this one, but this one right here. So I'm gonna yarn over once before I start, and then I'm gonna insert under the two loops, yarn over again. Now I have three loops on my hook, one, two, three. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through those two, and then yarn over and pull through those two. Can you please repeat that one more time? Okay, so I'll, yes, I will explain that again. With double crochets, um, you're going to start with a chain of three to bring you up to the height where you need to be. And that chain three counts as a stitch. So when we count it, we're going to count that as a stitch, but we're not going to work into this stitch like we did with single crochets. See those two loops? We're not going to work into there like we did previously. Because just because that's just the way it is. I can't really explain it. <laughs> that's just, I think because that chain of two probably takes up more space. So if you work another double crochet into there, you're gonna have kind of a too much going on, right? So that's a lot going on there. You can, I mean, you definitely can. You'll just have these sort of little like bumps hang, hanging on the side, right? So we just count that as a, stitch and then we don't work into this stitch that's all so now double crochet into this single crochet so yarn over insert under both loops yarn over pull through one two three loops on the hook yarn over pull through only the first two and now i have two more left so i'm going to yarn over and pull through those two so this is one double crochet, and this is a ne the next double crochet. It looks very weird at the beginning, but you just have to get used to those chains being a double crochet. So now we're gonna yarn over again. You're welcome, Marie. Insert under the two loops, yarn over, pull through, one, two, three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now I've made a third double crochet. 
So here from the side, one, two, three, and then from the top, you can see one, you can see two, the other one looks weird, but that's okay. We're gonna work into it after we get to the next row. And then we're gonna work a double crochet in each of these single crochets across. And remember, you're gonna go under both loops of the stitch. So, Pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. When I get to the end of this row, I'm going to show you what I was talking about with picking up uh, colors. Okay. Well, let's make sure I'm, I'm right on my count. So remember this counts as one, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Double crochets are really easy to count because they're very long. So you can see the whole post of the stitch. So it's easy to count from the side too. Uh, so that's 13 and I have one more single crochet left right there and I'm going to work my last double crochet into that single crochet so I should have 14 double crochets. Now at this point let's say I wanted to change back to the white. Okay, where's my white it's over here, so I, I cannot carry this white up because I need I need it here. So if you want to change colors every other row, you have to add a new ball every uh with every row unless you do like um two whites and two blues right so you could because i can't pick it up right here it's not there it's here i'm going to pick it up on the next row which will work because once i work here i'm going to get back to here and then i can pick up the white so that's why you can't pick up when you're um when you're just alter alternating row to row you need to be every other row, and then you can pick up, which is what we're going to do here. We're going to pick up. So now I have my last double crochet on row two, and on row three, it just says repeat row two. Okay, okay, repeat row two was just, um, I mean, row two was just double crochet, so we're just going to repeat that. So chain two, that's my first double crochet turn we don't work anything into there because we have that chain of two and we're going to go right into that next double crochet which is right there and i'm working a double crochet into each double crochet across so exactly what we did in the previous row um, but we're working into the double crochets, of course. So yarn over, insert under the two loops, yarn over, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Double crochets are easy and they um, work up fast because see how tall they are? You get a lot of fabric. Now I'm at, let's see how many I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's my, my second to last double crochet. And now here I have uh, my turning chain. That was the turning chain that I started from the previous row. It doesn't look exactly the same as the double crochets, but we're gonna work into it just as well. If it counts as a stitch, you work into it. So all I'm gonna do is work my double crochet into that chain there. So the, um, uh, the second chain. Okay, so just go right into the chain, one loop or two loops, it doesn't matter. Yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. That's the end of my double crochet. But now it says we are on row four. Now it says after row two, we're gonna drop the main color and then we're gonna go back to the contrast color. 
so now I have, uh, we're almost done guys. I know we're, we're going late, but we're almost done. We had a lot of people here today. So now I wanna pick up my contrast color. I wanna pick up my white. I don't have to add a new ball here because I have this ball that I did not cut just hanging right down here. So I can just pick it up and put it over my hook and pull it through. Now I have it on the side there, but that's fine. We can work over that later, okay? So that's when you pick up your color, when, you, when it's every other row. And then I'm just gonna chain up one. And this is where the pattern comes out. So if you can stay for this, we're almost there. Chain one. And then I'm going to single crochet in this first stitch. And I'm gonna single crochet in the next stitch. And the pattern tells me to single crochet, long single crochet, in the next single crochet two rows below. So you have to kind of get a feel for where that is. This is one. This is another one. You can see that double crochet is worked into it. And then this is the one we, that we wanna work into. There's a stitch already in it, but that's okay. You can still work into it. So no yarning over. I'm just gonna insert my hook all the way down there. Pull that loop through. Then you have to really stretch it up like that. Now, once you stretch it up and you have your two loops on the hook, you can just yarn over and pull through those two. And that's what makes that long stitch. Um, this, we need to not work anything into here because we work that stitch down there. If we work into there too, we'll have too many stitches, right? So we don't do anything in that one. And then in the next double crochet, we do a single and a single. Okay, now we're gonna do that again. So not into this one, not into this one, but into this one. Because we, we have two, two single crochets here. So we're gonna skip these two single crochets here and we're gonna go right into there. So I'm just gonna insert my hook, yarn over, pull it up and then just stretch it really long like that. Yarn over and pull through two, okay? See that double crochet? Don't do anything in there. That's our stitch right there. So the next double crochet, we work a single and we work a single. Okay, uh, skip this one, skip this one, go into there. So that's basically, whenever you see a pattern say two rows below, that's what you're doing. You're just um, not working into the, the row right below, which is what you almost always do. You're working um, two rows below, okay? Thank you, thank you for everyone who's, um, who enjoyed the class. Sorry we went a little late, but we had a lot of stuff to go over. <laughs> I'm glad you guys were able to stay. So single and single. And my very last long single crochet. So we skip this, skip this, and I'm gonna go into this one. And then pull that really long. This is just gonna take some uh, getting used to because of course, if I didn't pull it really long, it would, it would get all bunched up. So you just have to pull it um, up to the height that you need it to be. Skip, skip. And you have to kind of keep track of which stitches on the bottom you're skipping as well. Okay. And now I have two more stitches left, which is exactly what I wanted. So skip this one, I have this one, single, and then I have this last one, which is the chain, but that's okay. We just work right into that turning chain because it counts as a stitch. Okay. Uh, chain up one. This next row is just single crochet across. And here's where you can sort of do your count again and make sure um, you have counted everything properly. 
we want to make sure we have one single crochet into each single crochet across. So even into the long ones. That was a long one, a single crochet in there. So those V stitches are really just um, long double crochets. That's how you do it. You just you just have to pull up a really long loop and tension it so that way you don't get um, you don't bunch it up. Okay, now at the end of this row, what I because I did two rows in my white, now you can see, same as before, my blue is right there because I need to change to blue again at this point. And it's right there waiting for me because I didn't cut it. So at this point, I can just grab the blue, put it over my hook and pull it through and then start my next row, which is double crochets again. So double crochet, and then you just repeat that. Double crochet, double crochet, and then you're gonna double crochet all the way across and then double crochet all the way across again, and then do these fun, like super long single crochets. And then once you get it nice and even, you are going to have something that looks like this. So I wish we didn't go too long because I wanted to show you how to make a border. Um, but we'll we can do that another time and you can probably see that, um, see how to do a border. You're just gonna work single crochets into the sides and that way you'll work over these long um, pieces here, these floats. You just work right over those so they get all hidden you can't see them. Um, can you take a couple of minutes and show us the edge? Oh, okay. So for those of you who want to stay, I'll show you the edging really quick. If um, you know, if you need to go, that's fine, of course. But if you guys have a minute and you want to see the edging, I will definitely show you that. So let's cut this. Let's do it in black. No, let's do it. In black. Okay. So let's. I'm just going to show you on my little sample that I made. Okay. To do the edging, I ended here, uh, just like, you know, continue like we were doing. And then let's say the end of your row, if you wanna end with this color and then we'll do the edging with this color. All you have to do is instead of chaining up and turning like you normally would, you're just gonna start working along the side edge, okay? Bye everyone to, to everyone who is leaving and thank you so much for being here with me. Hope you have a great rest of your day, but for those of you who wanna stay, we'll do this real quick. So I'm just gonna sort of find a space and you don't wanna just make it like a big hole. You kinda of wanna avoid the big holes and try to get somewhere where it looks like there's a little bit more fabric and then make a single crochet. For the corner, you wanna double it up. Okay, so in that same space where I just put, put that single crochet, I'm gonna put another one because you have to have a little extra to turn the corner, okay? And now I'm just gonna do like this is a big hole, so I just don't like doing that. So I'm gonna kind of go under two loops like that. And Luke, you can stay if you wanna do this. I'm showing, I'm just gonna show how to do a little border, okay? Uh, here is a, Another little space. This is not like super, um, like you could put as, just put an even number of stitches in there. You don't, it's never gonna, it's usually never gonna tell you put this many, this many. They, it just, you just want it to be even, right? You don't wanna be, you want it to have nice evenly spaced stitches. Now here's like a bunch of stuff going on here, but that's okay. I'm just gonna go right into there and make a single crochet. And as you can see, I am working right over those floats there. This is my tail. I don't need to work over the tail. I'm just gonna push that aside. But I am gonna work over the floats that are left when I, put, when I um, carried the yarn up the side. So I'll make another single crochet here. And another one right here looks good. See, I'm just finding a place where, where it looks like a single crochet will fit and it won't be too bunched up right here. And this just takes some practice too. 
another one right here. I'm not working into stitches. I'm working into the ends of rows, technically. Working into here or row ends. If you see a pattern, it'll say work into the row ends and into here. And now, so I made a little, I just made some single crochets along the side edge. And now I'm back at the bottom. And because we worked into the, the that back bump, we have a really nice clean, almost looks like a row that we can work into. But for my corner, I want to put two stitches in there to turn the corner. So here's the corner. I'm going to put one and one more in the same space to turn the corner. And now I can just work a stitch into each one of these loops that I left from my starting chain. Thanks, Mariana. Um, I'm here once a month, you guys. So come back and see me. Next month, we're doing um, a fun like two color scarf. I forgot what it's called, but you should see it on there on the Michaels website. So here, of course, I can just go into each stitch. I don't have to worry about spacing them out properly because we're just going into the um, what this is technically is the opposite end of the foundation chain. So remember we worked our starting, our first row into the back bump of the foundation chain. Now that it's turned this way, these are the two loops that were left over from that, from that uh, back bump. So we can just work directly into those for the border. And, okay, I don't wanna keep you too long. So let's just say I continue just like I just did. I could probably do this. <laughs> and then when I get to the corner here, I'm gonna do, of course, you know, like I said, you're continuing. I'm just trying to do this quickly. I work two into there. And now here I am at the, at the side again. So I'm technically working into like the posts of these stitches or the ends of the rows. And then I just go into wherever I feel like there's a good space to put a single crochet stitch for the border. When you have rows of single crochets, you would typically put one single crochet into each row end. When you have double crochets, you would do like about two. So I'll do one here and then I'll do another one here. Okay, see how I'm just doing. The most important part is that they're evenly spaced. And now I'm at the end. So I'll do two more because that's my corner. And then there's the, where I've started. So I can just join with a slip stitch like that. And then you'd, I mean, I did it crazy here, but this is how it should look all the way around. So then you have a nice clean border around it. And that's it. And thank you to everyone who stayed. I know we went a little late, um, but yeah, that is the, and you would do the border the same for all three of those washcloths exactly the same way you did the border. So thanks for having or thanks for being with me today. Um, and thanks for staying with me today. And I will see you next time. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. Bye.